There are two types of gamers, doomers and designers. Because successful gamers aren't just born, their achievements are made by design. They had the same issues you have, pouring too much time, money and energy into games, spending countless wasted hours in front of a screen, frustration and anxiety from constant procrastination and the guilt and shame of wasted potential. But they found a way out. They emerged successful while you're still stuck in the same place. And the reason why? They adopted these habits. The difference between you and them is simple. They use games to elevate their lives while you let games dictate yours. These five habits are your path to change. Dr. K from the Healthy Gamer GG YouTube channel transformed his gaming addiction into a mission. He created purpose by turning his passion for gaming and the community to boost his career in psychiatry, helping thousands of gamers achieve mental well-being. Without giving yourself a worthy mountain to climb, you won't feel much point in the steps it will take to get there. It's like the, the big scam is that we are like, what's the purpose of life? Like, let's go ask someone really wise, right? Because if we ask someone really wise, they'll be able to give us the answer. But the whole point is that you're an individual, that you are living your life. And so if you want to make the most of it, you have to understand what you want out of it. And once you discover your purpose, then you can start to align your life around it. Right, because now you know why you're doing it. Now you can afford to wake up at 6 a.m. every day because you actually care about what you're studying. This is caring for life, makes it so much easier to live and so much more enjoyable. That purpose is so much more. You can actually start that today. In fact, you need to start it today. Dr. K created his success by altering his vision of gaming. He realized that purpose isn't just something that you find by turning over rocks, but it's something that you design. You need to reject outside influences of how you should live your life and discover what success means for yourself. Most YouTube videos would give you a cliffhanger like this. We are told to take actionable steps to improve your life, but aren't given a system to make those actions happen. <laughs> and here I thought my family was fucked up. <laughs> Thank you. Atreus! That's why modern self-improvement is broken, and it's my mission to fix that. In my self-improvement app I created for gamers called Life Game Design, which is currently free, I created the Minigame, a step-by-step -step process to design a fulfilling life that starts with the core principle of designing purpose. In the first stage of the cycle vision, the vision minigames guide you through finding out what success looks like in each area of your life. This turns into a vision board that will remind you why you're taking the hard steps towards the steep mountain of success and keep you aligned and locked in on your purpose. My name is Michael and my main quest is to help turn our love for gaming into our greatest advantage in life. I'd love to talk to you again, so hit the subscribe button and we can catch up again next time. Discovering a direction in life, no matter how big or small that mountain will be to climb, doesn't mean it will be easy. And it's more than likely that you'll procrastinate. But luckily we're gamers and we understand that grinding boring quests for hours and hours is exactly what it takes to reach our goals in game. Turning this into real life advice, Alex Hormozzi teaches us how to take this mountainous trick and turn it into a small simple staircase inspired by game design. Hormozzi spent his early days grinding on the game Fable when he was broke, lost and aimless. The black breath is a corruption of magic even I can't dispel. Only the pure light of Alfheim is strong enough to break through. But that road is long. What does this goal mean to you? It's everything. Follow me. How does it work? You will need this, a Bifrost, to create travel between realms. Place the Bifrost there. When guys played real life the same way they played video games, they'd make more money. I remember when I was playing Fable way back in the day, and I would literally stay in the zombie corner because it would continue to spawn zombies. And I would stay there and I would keep collecting all these diamonds and experience points so that I could make my avatar as big and as strong as humanly possible. And I sat there for hours just beating, so monotonously beating the same zombie over and over again. But yet, we're not willing to do that in the real world where you have to knock on more doors, send more emails, make more content. But the game's the same. You have to be willing to sit there and slay the same thing over and over again until your avatar gets strong enough to beat the bigger ones.
His depth of understanding the games he loved at the time helped him turn building his own business into a game that he got addicted to. Homozi realized that spending time grinding on basic tasks helped him level up so he could handle bigger tasks that would earn him more money. The only reason us gamers spend hours tackling really long quest lines without any procrastination is because the game designer took that massive quest and broke it down into smaller and smaller and smaller steps. The second stage of the minigame's design helps you design a purpose for each day that breaks that quest down into small steps, each of them turning into achievements that you can be proud of. Using projects and tasks, you can break down massive goals into small simple steps, just like how game designers break down complex and engaging quests into bite-sized pieces, making you spend hours in the game without realizing it. There are so many ways that you could climb up the mountain that you want to get to the top of, and this is where Hamza gives us our next habit that amplifies the previous two. My view on video games gets so many comments and so many guys asking me why I'm so aggressive and hostile towards it. And so many people have tried to figure out the reason why I'm so against video games and a bunch of them have said, oh, but he's he's just projecting because, you know, Hamza wasted a lot of his life on video games. Well, yeah, that's exactly why I tell it to you. You've got to understand the, the way that you give advice to someone, the way that I can transfer my wisdom to you is if I've made mistakes and I've wasted time. I feel nothing but disappointment in the young men that I see who waste time in the virtual world instead of real life because there is no excuses anymore. Hamza made hundreds of videos to help young men stop playing video games because that's exactly the trap that he fell into. Spending hours, days and weeks grinding on games like RuneScape instead of designing his own life. He was living a life by default, not by design. Unfortunately, when Hamza quit gaming, he overlooked the gold mine of productivity wisdom that is hidden in game design, which is why he and so many of us have spent over a thousand hours in our lives gaming. But our opinions about Hamza, good or bad, they literally don't matter. He is successful as an ex-gamer and that is undeniable. And after watching his growth all the way back from when his videos looked like this, I understood the cornerstone habit that separated him from the rest and made him millions. And looks, money or status, which one is it that actually gets more? Like, your brain's just full. Now, if you really keep asking yourself over at least a few days, you'll start to realize that your, your brain points are being sapped in 30 different directions. But look how much progress he's making in each one right now, it's nothing. This is how we, where most of us are living. Now, I don't think we should just live a one-dimensional life where we've got literally nothing else, because that would probably be sad. But maybe three is the perfect amount. You get three things that means a lot to you, but you choose the most important one. So for me, it's work, then health and fitness, then family. Credit for Hamza for making this idea viral, but he wasn't the one to create it in the first place. This diagram comes from the author Greg McEwen in his best-selling book, Essentialism, where he teaches us to focus like an essentialist. It's the exact principle we already know from role-playing games like Fallout. Most people try to live a perfectly balanced life, and we also know that most people aren't extremely successful. It is the outliers who draw our attention. These people dial in their focus on one or a few specific things, and we can't help but admire their expertise. An interesting Interestingly enough, we've done the same thing for characters we build in RPGs. We know the solution to having a strong character is to choose a playstyle and go all in on it. We know to max our key attributes that would drive our success for our chosen playstyle, and then we would build our endgame character around that. This is why your love for gaming is your greatest advantage in life, because people would have to read multiple books and podcasts to understand this to the depth that you and I already do. All you need to do now is learn how to apply the same principle to life. And to help us do this, I spent the last five years creating an attribute system for life called OctaCore to help us understand, organize, and optimize all areas of our lives. And to go with it, I designed a focus intention mini game to help you discover which of these areas of life should be your focus, just like Hamza advised us to do. Hamza reminds us to lock into our focus intention, but how do we know that all of the effort that we put in isn't just wasted? How do we know if we're just being aimlessly productive? Go back! No! No! What have you done? Why did you do that? I saved you! You are trapped in there! I waited and I waited, but you wouldn't come out! So I pulled you out! 
Ali Abdul, author, entrepreneur, productivity expert, and Horizon Zero Dawn lover, optimizes for everything. His love for the most efficient use of his time is the same love we feel for getting our character leveled up in the fastest way possible so we can tackle bigger and bigger quests. Which is why a surprising part of his productivity system he implements and swears by is reflection, which he mainly does through journaling. No! I could not be what she meant. Take a look. So if there is one single habit that's most changed my life, that habit is journaling. I've been journaling pretty consistently since like 2015, and I can attribute so many of the good things that have happened in my life as a result of journaling consistently. Something that I put a lot of money on is that if you approach journaling in the right way, then I can basically guarantee that it can change your life for the better. So broadly, there are three main reasons why journaling is incredibly effective. If you write about what you've been up to and how you've been feeling, it's super nice. I now look back from journal entries for the last like eight years, and I can see what I was doing on this day a year ago, two years ago, four years ago, five years ago, and it's really cool to see the progression of my life. But then we've got reason number two, which is even more powerful, which is that journaling helps you take control of your own thoughts and your own mind. Now, especially if you're prone to stress or worry or anxiety or fear, or you're letting fear of judgment and fear of failure and fear of self-doubt, you're letting these things hold you back from doing the things that you really want to do. But the third, and I think the most important benefit of journaling is that journaling can completely change the way that you approach your life. Initially, before taking an action, you decide what decision to take, and then that decision dictates the actions, and then the actions lead to the results. For example, for me, the decision to start this YouTube channel six and a half years ago dictated the action, i.e. making videos consistently, which has led to the results of my life being completely transformed. But there's one thing that's upstream of decisions, and that is thoughts and feelings. You have to have a bunch of thoughts, feelings, and beliefs in order to get to the decision and then that decision dictates your actions and then those actions completely change your life. Ali talks a lot about why the surface level of journaling is important but the bedrock that holds that underlying purpose is reflection and there are so many ways that you can reflect and journaling is just one of them and I honestly doubt that you're going to start a daily and consistent journaling habit to get the same benefits of reflection that me and Ali get just by watching our videos. So to make this important self-improvement and productivity technique something that we consistently do we need to add the magic of game design. In the last mini game in the self-improvement cycle, which is Reflect, we can view all the projects and tasks we completed that show as achievements to view at the end of each day, week, and beyond. Using this achievement system on top of OctaCore will show us which areas of life we are advancing in, but also how proud we are of our progression. I've also added journaling prompts that you can see right next to your achievements to help you gain insights to create a better life design for next time. And the combination of all these habits turn into a gameplay loop of self-improvement. Vision, design, focus, and reflect. Repeating back to the core loop of design, focus, and reflect. See that mountain? Looks like a giant's finger scraping the sky. That's the highest peak in all the realms. No here. Can't we just take that bridge? We have a Bifrost. When the giants destroyed all other bridges to their realm, they locked this one up with a secret rune. If it still exists, only a giant would know it. And all of them left Midgard a long time ago. True, but today the winds of fate have kicked up a strange vortex of coincidence. Fact is, there's only one person alive who can get you where you need to go. And luckily for you, my schedule's wide open. We're going to Jotunheim, right? It's your best and only move from a tactical standpoint. What do we do? Yes! First, you need to cut off my head. Wait, what? The fifth and final habit ties everything together, brought to us by Chris Williamson. He's the host of the rapidly growing Modern Wisdom podcast, of which each of these highly successful gamers have been a guest of. Got it. Let's hope this doesn't cause you to explode or anything. Oh, I haven't considered that. Maybe we should talk about this a bit more. Nah, I'm sure you'll be fine. Ready? Oh, that's unpleasant! Now, boy! We must be close. Well, what are we waiting for? Think it's far? We will see. This guy, Kyle Eschenroder, explains it so well said uh, blindly following your desires makes you a slave to your impulses the people who do this are never going to fully actualize their potential either for happiness or for success to achieve freedom 
we must be able to think for ourselves. In short, your default factory settings are shit. Don't follow them. Your life, as far as I can see it, should be lived by design, not by default. It took me thousands of hours of consuming countless self-improvement videos to understand the connection between all of these habits and how they build on one another. The biggest lesson that I got from following so many highly effective people for so long is this. But now, I realize I don't need you to understand anything. I don't need you at all. No, back off, Kratos. This has nothing to do. This path you walk, vengeance. You will find no peace. I know. You. I'll deal with you later. But family first. The knowledge you consume is only as valuable as the systems that you use to implement it. My biggest problem with self-improvement is that YouTubers are incentivized to get their subscribers to binge watch their content. Before I started the same journey of helping people, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't part of the problem. Because even though the advice that they give is extremely valuable and no doubt life-changing, the only people that it helps are the ones that take it upon themselves to take action. And those people are very few. Most YouTubers giving you these golden nuggets of wisdom don't give you a system to help you implement their amazing advice. This means that as you watch more you actually end up in the trap of doing less because you're just feeling like you're improving but you're actually doing nothing. That's why Life Game Design which is currently free turns organizing and optimizing your life into a better game to get addicted to. You can check out the full tour of it here where I explain each stage of the mini game cycle that is inspired by the habits of these successful gamers or you can check out the philosophy of Life Game Design a bit more in depth. I hope you subscribe so I can see you again, but above all, I hope you design yourself a fulfilling day.